So, Baxter, as an addendum, I have a question that preys on my mind. Okay. Daily. And the question is, it's two questions, actually. First question, do you consider yourself a decent bloke, sort of ethically, morally? Are you uh, uh, empathetic? Are you considered... what? Empathetic. <laughs> Are you joking? Oh, what? Yeah. Okay. Um, That's kind of yes or no. Yeah. I do consider myself an empathetic person and perfectly decent and viable human being. Fine, good. So the second part of the question, once you've answered that one, is um, how do you go to sleep at night when you Top have... a massive pile of cash. Only <laughs> <laughs> totally joking. Um, how do you go to sleep at night knowing that your, your invention could uh, stop thousands of people from going to sleep at night ever again? Okay, well, firstly, I suspect that those thousands of people will be going to sleep for good. That's um, what I mean, yeah. yeah that's... No. Right, to look at the vast span of human history, you might think that people who invent weapons are, are not really contributing to mankind's um, furtherance, or that it's a good thing, that they're inherently bad, that whoever invented the sword was bad, whoever invented the bow was bad, and so on and so forth. However, if we look at the history of mankind, and you go back in time, you'll find the more simple weapons technology is, and the more available weapons technology or high-end weapons technology is to the mass of the people, the more likely you are to die a violent death. So if you go back to Iceland uh, in, say, the, uh, you know, the 9th and 10th centuries, the kind of upper end of weapons technology in hand-to-hand fighting was an axe or sword, which was a thing that most men could have. And so many people died as a result of warfare in those days that their religion basically stated that if you didn't die in warfare, you wouldn't go to heaven. And that's a pretty strong indication of exactly how prevalent violent death was in their society. The same is true if you go to places like Papua New Guinea now. Uh, the rate of attrition and the rate of intertribal violence is extraordinarily high. What you find as weapons technology improves, and certainly as weapons get more expensive and more technologically advanced, and only available to a f- smaller and smaller proportion of society is that you end up with a professional army who fight and die and you end up with a large civilian population who live through it all and don't uh, get worn down by this constant strife. Um, the proportion of populations who were killed in warfare has been dropping in line with our increase in destructive capability. Which is pretty extraordinary to think about in fact, one might say that the second half of the 20th century was very, very light on first world civilian casualties, largely because we could destroy them all at the push of a button. So, when you invent a new weapon and a new form of military technology which is available to a professional army only, you're actually saving the lives of people who would otherwise have been killed in this kind of tribal internecine strife which has plagued mankind since the dawn of time. I know that sounds counterintuitive, that to invent a killing machine saves lives, but the truth of the matter is, in the broad span of human history, the more technologically advanced our weapon systems have become, the more of us have died surrounded by our families in bed. That was absolutely brilliant. I've been talking to people in the defence industry for 15 years, and I've never... I've always asked that question, how do we sleep at night? And I've never heard anything as compelling as that. But that's the truth. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, very, that's very good. Thank you very much. Well, how, the question now is, how, to myself, how have I managed to sleep at night so well before knowing that bit of information? That's the real question. How, you know, people who aren't aware of the fact that it might, it sounds very likely that... There is another way of looking at it. The other way of, like, squaring it with yourself, um, which actually I think is less, uh, less compelling, um, is that essentially... Uh, Warfare is still part of life. There are still bullying regimes. There are people who wish to impose themselves upon their fellow man. Um, and as a result, um, kind of nations, particularly in what we would refer to as the free world, need to have militaries. Um, if you're going to get your young men straight out of school to go off and, and take the risk of engaging in these battles, which are still occurring, which do still occur, do you wish to send them out with sub- substandard kit? Absolutely not. No, of course you don't. I mean, at the end of the day, like if my son Josh or Matthew decides to join the army, I would like to think that they're being provided with the best that the, the, the British nation was able to provide for them. I certainly wouldn't like to think of them being given stuff that we knew was substandard because we had some kind of moral problem with giving them stuff that would actually help them survive and come home, having taken part in what I would hope would be a just struggle. Excellent. Thank you very much.